Even without knowing you very well, I can say that you were born a few years ago, most likely in the past decade. Who knows, maybe even in the last millennium. Like me, with each passing year, you feel older. Changes that are too small to notice from one day to the next, but over time they gradually accumulate. At some point in your journey, you learn that with each passing day, we are closer to our end. The days seem to drag on, but the years fly by quickly. It often feels like you simply won't have enough time to do everything you want. Travel, visit every country in the world, learn all the languages, or discover all the secrets of the universe on your own. Deep down you have that feeling that if you were immortal, you would have enough time to truly achieve all your dreams. Until one day you realize that your friends are aging more than you. For some reason you have stopped in time. You no longer look in the mirror and notice signs of natural aging. You don't get sick and this leaves you confused. Everything becomes more confusing when you, after suffering an accident supposed to be fatal, come out unharmed. It's when you realize that perhaps your greatest dream has indeed come true for some reason. You are now truly immortal, and death is simply impossible for you. At first, all of this seems like a dream, so you celebrate and do things that no human has ever done on Earth. But you still have a long way to go, and that is undoubtedly the future of your life. Five years. In your first five years of immortality, time is no longer an issue. You will never run out of time to do anything. You start TV shows, books, movies, learn new languages because you know you'll definitely have time for everything. Even your work becomes lighter. You know you don't need to rush your journey around the world to fit into the coming years because you have your whole life ahead of you. Ten years. There's absolutely no rush to start a family or land your dream job. There is enough time for that. Life even lightens without the pressure to accomplish everything in such a short period. Immortality seems like a blessing. You shape your life at your own pace, and it's one of the most valuable things immortality has given you. 50 years. Eventually, your friends and family members start to age, but this is something natural that many people go through in life. At times, you find yourself feeling some strange emotions, but nothing that a human being hasn't experienced and survived. You see technology advancing, with artificial intelligences doing incredible things that would make things like chat and GPT seem prehistoric. At this point in history, humanity has already reached Mars, and you even watched the live broadcast of the first steps humans took on the Red Planet. You might remember that this is how your grandparents felt when they witnessed the first steps on the moon, a hundred years. You are witnessing science reach a point never seen before. Diseases that you never imagined could be cured are now treated with a quick visit to the emergency room. Physics has finally begun to answer some of the questions that have lasted for decades. Quantum gravity is now a subject in college. Paradoxes have been resolved. Quantum mechanics is no longer a source of amazement among physicists and philosophers. Each and every day you wake up hungrier for knowledge. There is no urgency, there is no rush. You know that if there is anything to do, you have time for it. But your family members and friends are gradually saying goodbye, one by one. All the familiar faces that accompanied their personal and intellectual development are becoming just memories in their increasingly inactive contact list on the phone. They even prolonged their lives more than humans in the past due to advances in medicine, but they couldn't achieve immortality like you. For the first time, you encounter the downside of being an immortal and even question whether the pain caused by immortality is a fair price. 150 years. The feeling of loneliness consumes you when you become the oldest human being of all. You lived in a time when no one else from that era is alive. You remember the wars and what caused them, but you see everyone repeating the same mistakes from the past and creating new wars. Global warming has reached an extreme point, and you are witnessing climate, political and environmental crises happening around the world. Even living in a first world country, you suffer the consequences directly. Moving because of extreme weather events has become part of your routine. It seems that no place on Earth is safe from either excessive rain or disastrous droughts. The sea level has risen due to the melting polar ice caps and is altering territories. A refugee crisis is a global issue. Often countries enter conflicts to resolve territorial, energy and social crises such as hunger and water scarcity. You wonder how we got to this point with so much time to prepare. 500 years. Technological advancement is in full swing and words like energy crisis have become museum headlines. It's news all over the world when they announce that we have reached Kardashev Scale 1 and energy will no longer be a problem. But inhabiting other planets is out of the question. Though humanity has a permanent colony on the Moon and Mars, mostly with researchers and military personnel, Mars is still very different from Earth to have a large population. 800 years, the population was reduced to a minimum after all the crises and environmental problems. Some regions of the planet are now uninhabitable. You are shocked when you compare the culture that existed centuries ago to the new way humans have found to continue living. You can learn more about the culture of the places. You study sociology in depth to understand that the new society you find yourself in is very different from your own. Teachers talk about the humanity that lived in the 2000s like you used to hear about people who lived in the Middle Ages. 
No one understands or believes that you personally knew that era. You are possibly the smartest person in the world, with nearly a millennium of accumulated knowledge. But how can we prove that all this knowledge is true if most of the information has been lost over time? Maybe storing all of humanity's data on hard drives wasn't the best option after all. A thousand years. Technology is so advanced that Mars has finally been terraformed and part of humanity will be transferred there. Some moons of Saturn and Jupiter have also proven to be suitable for human colonies. Who knows, you might even be considered by governments to be taken on these expeditions. After all, nothing can kill you. You are the ideal person to explore space. 10,000 years. You come to the conclusion that there is no place like Earth, but the Earth you knew 10 millennia ago no longer exists. Magnetic poles have reversed, magnetic north is now south, most of the digital information saved from millennia of history was lost in the process. Time itself has just stopped making sense. What is a day to someone who has already lived 3 million of them? 50,000 years. Back on Earth, you witness the ice age it is entering because of the axis of rotation. The remnants of global warming caused by humans delay this process a bit, but it is indeed happening. You even vaguely remember when Earth collapsed due to global warming, but now it's quite different. You witness a new climate collapse because of the ice age. Apparently the planet is indeed not so safe on scales much larger than a human lifetime. Food becomes increasingly scarce in many regions, and this leads to the extinction of some heat-adapted species and even has negative effects on humanity. But even before the ice age, you have already become the oldest organism of all time, 100,000 years. You feel lonely on Earth, and the only options are the colonies on Mars and some moons of the giant planets. There is even news humans are trying to go to Pluto since technology makes it possible to deal with the cold of the dwarf planet. In the sky, you can see the supernovas of Canis Majoris and Betelgeuse, and it recalls humanity in 2021 thinking Betelgeuse would go supernova and following the saga on Twitter. A supernova causes you overwhelming nostalgia for humanity back then. What would people from 2021 think now? Would they recognize each other? 500,000 years. Humanity still holds a fondness for Earth and news always reaches you about what is happening on the planet. Volcanoes have become increasingly active, starting an intense greenhouse effect process. You hear the news that a sizable asteroid has hit Earth and life there is getting harder every day. What remains are plants and small animals. One million years. A supervolcano erupts on Earth, causing ash to reach the atmosphere, blocking part of the sunlight, representing the end of animals and some plants. It's impossible for you to return to Earth now. It has become an inhospitable place, and there's no possibility of setting foot on the surface. At this point, all of humanity and all animal life on Earth only survive on the planets and moons colonized by humans. 50 million years. You decide that you want to see Earth before it becomes even more unrecognizable than it already is. When looking at the planet, you need different wavelengths on your ship to be able to see the surface because the atmosphere is saturated with gases and constant volcanic activity. Additionally, a large asteroid collided with Earth and the atmosphere is opaque, making it impossible to see directly. However, observing you see the continents are coming together. There is a new continent, the Union of Africa and Asia. You eagerly await the Americas to join, 200 million years. From here, you know it's not even safe to get close to Earth. Your visits are coming to an end and it's time to say goodbye to the planet where you were born. The solar system is at risk of being hit by a gamma ray burst. It's simply no longer safe to stay here. But looking at Earth for the last time, you realize that the continents have become one. The sight makes you dizzy. Amazing how much things have changed over large scales of time. 500 million years. You are the only living human who no longer has a sense of time. Millions of years ago feel like yesterday. You now live on the timescales of the universe and concerns of the distant future become the concerns of tomorrow. You realize that very soon the entire solar system will become inhospitable to life. The sun is starting to get hotter and the brightness is gradually increasing. Planets like Mercury and Venus are already unreachable. Earth can no longer be inhabited. One billion years. The sun's luminosity has increased to the point of making life impossible on Mars. Earth is being completely scorched by the sun's luminosity, the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere drops, and the last plants die. Officially, the end of life on Earth has come, and you are the last living being born on Earth, the last person to have experienced Earth. A long time ago, you gave up trying to understand what it means, but the image of your home being destroyed still affects you. Two billion years. Earth is worse than Venus was when you were born. It is unrecognizable. It is now a rock without oceans and without an atmosphere, as the atmosphere evaporated from the increased solar luminosity. The magnetic field has also ceased to exist. Other inner planets are starting to heat up. The only good thing you can see is Andromeda, which now occupies a large part of the sky. It is so close soon you will see the collision of the two galaxies. 5 billion years. Even with the incredible view of the Andromeda galaxy growing larger in the sky, you are worried to see the sun increasing over the years. 
Now a red giant, it has swallowed the planets Mercury, Venus, and Earth. A strange sensation fills your body. The idea everything and everyone you knew ceased to exist as they were swallowed by the sun. You don't have time to mourn the end of your home planet. Another problem is right in your sight. Eight billion years. With the sun reaching red giant status, it has become cooler and less massive. This means that the gravitational force has weakened. The orbits of the planets move away from their original positions, turning what remains of the solar system into unending chaos. Asteroids, meteors, and disturbed comets bombard the remaining planets. Celestial bodies colliding is the new danger you have to live with, and there's nothing anyone can do. But you can't complain about the view you have. The Milky Way and Andromeda merging has triggered an extreme process of star formation. The sky of your home is filled with bright stars and nebulae forming stars. 10 billion years. The sun long since became a white dwarf. The solar system has practically ceased to exist, with some planets escaping the gravitational pull. Everything is chaotic here, and that's when you finally take a spaceship and decide to explore the rest of the galaxy. Things that humans have tried before, and you know there must be human colonies out there. You yourself have participated in some explorations to other stars and planets outside the solar system, but you always returned home. But now you no longer have a home, and you are tired of losing so much. The end of the solar system was the most you could bear, and now you decide to explore the galaxy on your own. 20 billion years. The galaxy is completely painted in various colors. Some you can see with the naked eye and others depend on the sensors installed on your ship. Stars are forming at full speed. The supermassive black holes have merged and remained active for a long time. It was the brightest moment you had ever seen in the universe. And it was also the first time since you became immortal that you saw a positive side to it all. 50 billion years. Andromeda and the Milky Way are now one. Soon the same process of galaxy collision will happen with the entire local group, and you will be alive to witness it from the front row. 100 billion years. You know you are seeing the last process of star formation happening before your eyes, and you don't want to think too much about what awaits you in the future. The sky is gradually getting darker. 150 billion years. You feared the most is here, impossible to send a signal to other galaxies. The expansion of space-time effectively prevents the exchange of information, and there goes the last chance to explore a different galaxy. If you had decided to explore one, you would probably be physically trapped in it now, making it impossible to access an outside world. Only previously emitted information continues to arrive. A stronger sense of isolation takes over you. The night sky is now darker and darker. 500 billion years. The galaxies start to become less luminous because the stars are indeed beginning to die and only reddish stars are left. All you see are old galaxies waiting to die. One trillion years. Everything in the universe starts to become invisible to you. The closest galaxies have already reached the distance to be outside the observable universe. Light from outside no longer reaches us. And the only thing you can still see is Milcomeda, which is the merger of all the galaxies that once made up the local group. Five trillion years. The era of star formation has passed. The stars of Milcomeda are beginning to slowly, very slowly fade away. First, the brightest ones start to cease to exist. Outside of Milcomeda, you can't see anything anymore, just total, complete darkness. Nothing else reaches you. 10 trillion years. Stars have stopped forming in the universe and only a few remaining red dwarfs are left, which will accompany you for at least another 10 trillion years. You adopt a white dwarf star as your new home and stay in orbit until its end comes. It's your best option. There isn't much left to see in the galaxy. 50 trillion years. You've already had to change homes five times. All the red dwarfs that you have adopted have now reached the end of their lives. Nothing remains. Only you. 100 trillion years. Red dwarfs have finally ceased to exist. Now there's only you and compact objects like black holes, neutron stars, and white dwarfs. You have reached the end of the era of stars, the era of the universe in which you were born. It's almost as if losses and endings are the only things that never end in your life. However, with a lack of matter to feed on, the black holes are inactive and you can't see anything. The universe is darkening. Everything is getting darker. The only light you can see are infrequent explosions that happen when white dwarfs collide, or neutron stars, or the light from one of them being accreted by black holes. 100 quintillion years. Galaxy is unstable. Part of the material is ejected outward. Part collapses into the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. You are ejected out of the galaxy and become something wandering through the darkness of the universe. When the remaining material begins to decay towards the supermassive black hole, quasars are activated for a period of time. But you are already tired knowing even this will also end. You watch the last meal of the supermassive black hole. A Google of years. Now there is only you and black holes. You are trapped in the era of black holes and there is nothing left to see. The universe is completely dark. 
Occasionally, some remaining white dwarfs or neutron stars fall towards black holes. And this momentarily creates a flash of light. You know that without feeding, even black holes will start to die. You continue to wander indefinitely through the darkness. Every now and then, you observe lights that are black holes finally reaching the end of their life in Hawking radiation. These are the last photons of the universe, the last light you will see in this vast cosmos, and you know it. 10 to the power of 2500. You have lost track of time. You don't know how long you have wandered through the universe. It is practically infinite. The lack of light and anything else makes you realize that you have reached the era of darkness. In the universe now, there is only dark matter. Electrons, positrons, and, if you're lucky, a few protons. But they rarely meet because the universe is too vast and even at the speed of light, things wouldn't be able to meet. Gradually, everything is reaching the lowest possible energy state. And the end is near, except for you. Extreme future of the universe. Entropy has reached its limit. You become nothing and your consciousness can no longer exist here. Everything has come to an end. You wonder if it was worth being immortal. You might have been the only human to see everything, but with no one to talk to or share these experiences with besides your own thoughts, you simply wish you could go back in time and have lived and died like a normal person. Maybe the beauty of life is really the fact that it eventually ends that we need to use our numbered days to love, discover, and share knowledge. Everything comes to an end, even the universe. But now that you are immortal, one of the most desired things by human beings, you realize that it is actually a curse. You are in the dark, floating in the cold where there once was a living and colorful universe. Appreciate the fact that you are mortal because it makes life even more special. Enjoy your day, or should I say your days, and have a great time. Thank you so much and see you next time.